What up, what up, what up? It's your favorite shit talking squirrel. Back for the YouTube video. Uh, so we got kind of a fun one in the Santos court. This guy is a wackadoo. <laughs> I watched it earlier. I don't remember all of it. So, uh, yeah. We'll watch this along together. When I remember, this guy's a little bit of a doink. <laughs> so let's laugh at him, shall we? <laughs> let's get this. And so let's go on the record. <laughs> in the matter of... Curtis Carson, two three five zero eight. Good morning, Your Honor. Hey. Mr. Here and get my client to sign the the matter being heard you soon. Thank you, Mr. Carson. Your name, please. Curtis Carson. All right. Today is the jail. The date scheduled for a jail review and information violation. And Mr. Carson is currently on probation for operating while visibly impaired. And Mr. Carson was sentenced July 24th to 45 days jail and probation. And there was a jail review set for October 2nd. And then it's alleged he failed to appear for, I'm sorry, he tested positive for alcohol and marijuana on July 25th. And also he failed to appear for testing on August 8th. And so, that is where the probation violation is coming in. And because it's up for probation violation hearing today, the jail review was moved forward as he has two um, pending violations. And so, counsel, what's happening today? Your Honor, I had an opportunity to review my client's rights to a hearing in which he understands that he can come in front of the court and allege that these violations are not accurate. That being said, that won't be necessary. He's prepared to admit responsibility to the violations. I'd ask for an opportunity to allocate on his behalf. Carson, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear from the testimony you want to give this man to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. And you heard the allegations for probation from your attorney, correct? Yes. And as to the allegations that you tested positive for alcohol and marijuana on July 25th and failed to appear for drug testing August 8th, how do you plead? Um, I did. I don't understand how I dropped. 34 um any alcohol mr carson i, I explained to you, mr. carson i explained to you what? that it, you can go back several days and that while yeah i still i'm still i'm i'm still unsure of how that became though well, mr carson i told you what i i understand i told you what i admitted to okay. but the drinking i don't understand i don't know if it's some listerine Oh, no, you didn't. So, <laughs> some Listerine. Do you know how much Listerine you have to drink? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about, like, rinsing and spitting. I mean drink, like swallow, like large gulps of Listerine. There is so little alcohol in Listerine. It's so fucking stupid. Like, maybe for drinking Listerine with tequila in it, <laughs> that might make a difference. Like a fucking... <laughs> Like a dentist office margarita, you know, <laughs> cover the brim in like toothpaste and then <laughs> garnish with one of those disposable flossers. <laughs> Maybe it was the Listerine. Like, what are you fucking bathing in it? <laughs> when they say, <laughs> when they say rinse and spit, <laughs> they don't mean like rinse your body, like bathe in it and then just, you know, <laughs> spit on the ground. It's, <laughs> it's fucking God. This fucking guy. This fucking guy. There's something, cause I don't, you know what I mean. Like that's the only thing that I can okay. think of. All right, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this matter for an in-person hearing. I'll enter a plea of not guilty. We set this for an in-person hearing on August 29th. Okay, and um, I was in the accident. Did he tell you about the accident? No, we didn't get that far yet. Okay. 
We'll do August 29th. And actually, we'll do 10, we'll do 11 a.m. because um, I'm presuming we're going to have to have the lab and the um, testing center present. And so, um, that's being said, Judge, and that's fine since uh, I'm still, you know, I'm not the MITC that day, but I'm sure one of the other can um, if that's the case. Yes, you're not. Okay. We'll have to have somebody else. Um, that's right. We'll adjourn both of these, or I'll adjourn the jail review that day as well, sir. <clears throat> and um, I'm sorry, Council, there was an accident. Yes. Judge, yeah, yeah, this was going to go towards the explanation of some of the, uh, the allocution, but there's nothing to be to, to give in reference to it right now, is you're scheduling it for an in person hearing. Okay. All right. Sir, if you're tested today, what's in your system? Um I, honestly I told I told my attorney, this is what I I mean, not my attorney, the what's his name that we on the um that we're on the Zoom with. I told him that uh, what's his name? Excuse me, sir. What's his name is Christopher Shunky, and he is your attorney. Okay, Mr. Christopher, the attorney. I, I just explained to him that um all the first of all. I didn't even know that I could do jail or that I was going to jail or probation until the day that I got um sentenced. I didn't even know that I was that jail or uh probation was possible. Number two, um hold on, sir. Number one, stop, please. Number one is that you um had a retained attorney. Both the uh he never the told husband, me until excuse, the day of sentence. Excuse me, please excuse me. The substance abuse report and screening was emailed to you and your attorney back on back in June. Then the court initially held this matter June 21st. We adjourned it to July 17th. You failed to appear that day, and we set it for July 24th as you had contacted or your attorney had contacted the court. Yeah, I was, yes. So, sir, prior to going on the record, you had a conversation with your attorney, Mr. Hall. Yes. Yes. So that was based upon the report and recommendation that was mailed out early June. Yes, which, which he never said anything to me about jail or probation. Sir, I will indicate as well that the June 21st date didn't occur. We adjourned it to July 17th, specifically for you to get your affairs in order in the case that this court would sentence you to jail. So don't tell me you were unaware of that because that was specifically the reason why this court adjourned it to July. And then um, you failed to appear. I, I, I was running late and I and as soon as, as soon as I got here, I went to the to that little window. Because they said that they sent out a bench war and then they cleared it up right then and there. And, and, and then when I got back to court on July, that date, he told me while we were sitting out there in that table right outside the court that, okay, they're recommending jail. I said, what? Well, this whole time, on, I didn't sir, have a duck. Sir, sir, that also occurred in June because that was a specific reason that I granted your attorney's request to adjourn it to July 17th. So please don't try to tell me that you did not know that until now. So well, my, maybe, question maybe, still remains. Maybe, my question maybe remains. Maybe if you were to test if you were to test today, what's in your system? I didn't know that I couldn't smoke weed. Don't I was on parole. I did I did 12 months of sir? parole. I did 12 months of parole and I and I got and I never got I never got dropped for weed. They what they sir, took I'm it off sorry. the panel. Sir, sir, am I the judge that was presiding over your case that you were on parole for? Excuse me. 
Am I the judge that presided over your case that you're currently on, that you were on parole for when you're claiming you didn't have any problems smoking weed? Am I that judge? No, but I just thought that was the law because they changed the law. They took it off the panel. Sir, sir, alcohol is also legal. And that's also something that you're not allowed to consume when you're on probation. And I was very clear, very, 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 very clear at your arraignment on April 4th, you're not allowed to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs that are not prescribed. Then I said it again on May 2nd, when you're here for your pretrial, bonding conditions are continued. Again, May 16th, bonding conditions are continued. And I'm certain that I asked you, each of those dates won't be detected in your system. And you're not allowed to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs that are not prescribed. I also, on July 24th, when I sentenced you, for sure indicated that because that was a condition of your probation. What's the matter, Joey? You got a fucking eye problem? You look like Stevie Wonder, your eyes rolling around. Which you received a copy of your written instruction, your written probation conditions. Did you not? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so don't tell me that you did not know you were not allowed to smoke weed. Don't tell me that. I mean, Mr. Peter, all right. So when did you use it? Yesterday or today? I mean, I, I, I've been going through. I, I've been going through a lot. I lost my job. I got. I got Sir? thirty-five stitches in I, my arm. You excuse know, me. I'm going through physical therapy. Sir? I gotta, so I, yesterday I, I, or today? Which day? Which day did you use it? Yesterday. I'm currently, I'm, currently I'm trying to tell you, I'm currently, I'm, I am currently, I'm currently using, I'm currently smoking. So right now while you're in court. No, have, not like right now. I mean, like I've been, I've been like, I've been smoking because I've been stressed out. Sir, stressed out, I don't believe is a legitimate medical reason. Dude, how you don't believe? I just lost my job. I lost my job. I'm looking at jail. I just, I just look at my, look at my arm. I got 35 stitches in my arm. I had to recover from that. I'm a hundred pounds heavier than I was when I got, when I got on the truck. So just moving around doing regular work, I got to go through physical therapy. I'm going through a lot right now. This all just hit the fan. Sir, you may be going through a lot, but this court's order is its order. And you chose to you. ignore that. I did not choose to ignore it. I'm just going through, I'm just mentally going through a situation. I was depressed and I don't know. That's the only way I knew how to handle it. Sir, being depressed, having a lot going on, going through a lot, that is not a reason to violate this court order and just go ahead and smoke marijuana because you want to do that. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh my God, stare down. I can't. <laughs> When's the last time you were tested, sir? Um, that first time, that very first time I went to go to report. I haven't been since then because I've been recovering from the accident. When was your accident? My accident was actually just actually right before sentencing. I was in the court with the uh, with a sweatshirt on, if you don't rem realize, because I was covering up my wounds because I didn't want to look all dramatic in there. Okay, and sir, what are the what's the nature of your injuries from the, from the accident? Look, 35 stitches. I got a puncture in my elbow that took forever to recover that I had to be really careful with because it was almost uh, getting infected. I landed on my left elbow, so my, my whole collarbone and shoulder area and my rotator cuff is still bruised. Like, okay. I can't do a push-up if and I wanted to. Sir, how does, excuse me, how does that affect you showing up for testing? For testing? Because I, I mean, I was just, first I had to sit 
for a long time, for the first two weeks, I had to sit down, laying down with my with my arm above my heart. It was just a dramatic experience. I just I, I was on uh, uh, pain medication, and you know, just every everything, losing my job, getting injured, facing jail. I just was in the bed. I didn't move. I just didn't move for the first few weeks after that. Okay, and so that's been a couple months. So tell me why it is that you need to be excused from testing. It's that's it's been about a month. It's been about a month. It's been probably a solid oh, month. From, from, from your July accident. sentencing, not your yeah. first date of sentencing. Okay. No. Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay, Excuse that me. was a lot. That's okay. I can understand you had a traumatic experience in a car accident, or no, I'm sorry, in your accident. Yes, in a semi. Okay, so I'm not hearing why you cannot appear for testing. I just didn't go because I was because uh, because the condition I was in, I just didn't go mentally and physically. I just didn't go. I mean, I don't. I'm telling you the honest truth. It took a while for everything to really just soak in. And so you're not working. No, uh, he had a um a job for me in the warehouse, but now that the trucking thing is going slow, he don't even really need loaders anymore. So I got to find something else to do. But I did pay four hundred dollars on the um toward the probation. Okay, and you also paid money for marijuana at some point, right? No. It's amazing how many people get their marijuana or any other drugs for free when. Anyway, sir, I'm going to indicate the following. $5,000 personal bond on this matter. You are to participate in testing today. Okay. Zero test. excuses as to not going to test. So go test and then what? And then you're back, you're in person in this courtroom on Tuesday, one week from tomorrow at 11 a.m. Okay. For an in-person hearing on your jail review and your probation violation. All right. Please email in to Ms. Shaw and she'll give you the information regarding uh, your testing. Okay. You know, in by 1040. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Off the record. Well, there you have it. Oh my God. I just, I fucking couldn't with this guy. <laughs> His excuse for smoking weed on probation, like basically amounted to, I got a lot going on. <laughs> he fucking says that to a judge. What a fucking moron. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought. I love reading the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. All right? Bye, guys.